back everyone. I just want to make a really quick video to clarify some misinformation I've seen floating around the internet when it comes to torquing your lug nuts on your car. Uh, I've seen a lot of discussion on forums and just online in general about whether or not you should add anti-seize uh, to your studs and I'm going to show you why it might be a bad idea if you're using the manufacturer's torque rating because chances are it's a dry torque rating. So quickly, the very first thing we need to talk about is the torque wrench, the tool that you're using to torque your lug nuts. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with how a torque wrench uh, works and how torque ratings are determined, uh, the preload of a bolt is actually related to the torque applied through friction. So when the friction is modified, so if you're using, say, anti-seize, it will result in a lesser torque to achieve the same preload in the bolt. And since most of the torque applied is used to overcome friction, almost 90% of it, if you use the dry torque rating on a lubricated fastener, you actually run the risk of stressing the bolt beyond its yield strength. First, I gotta say excuse the messy shop, but it's not my shop, so I have access to a great tool here, so I'm not gonna complain. Uh, this tool is called a Skidmore device, and it's gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about when I say that anti-seize makes a difference in preload. So this device allows you to torque a bolt and then it gives you the corresponding preload or tension generated by whatever bolt nut combination you use. In our case, we'll be using 3 8 inch Imperial Fasteners Grade 8. So what I have here are two brand new 3 8 inch Imperial bolts. They are Grade 8. Now these are smaller than your wheel studs. Uh, however, the important thing here is the relative difference in preload when we use the same torque value to torque a dry stud versus a lubricated stud. Okay, so I have the 3 8 inch bolt set up right here, and I have the nut here, and this is gonna simulate your wheel stud and your lug nut. Up here, you can see the bolt tension rating in pounds, and you have a second gauge here also, uh, just different scale in pounds. So when I torque this nut, you're gonna see the bolt tension increase. So we're gonna begin by dry torquing the first bolt to 44 foot-pounds, uh, which is the dry torque rating for a grade eight, three eighths inch fastener. So let's go ahead and do that. As you can see, the bolt tension is increasing. And there we go. We've reached 44 foot-pounds and the gauge reads approximately just over 5,500 pounds of preload. So typing into our calculator really quickly here, we have 5,500 pounds of preload. We're gonna divide that by the tensile area of the bolt, which is 0 0.0775 inches. And we get about 71,000 PSI of stress. And we can divide that by the uh, minimum yield stress of this particular fastener, which is 120,000 PSI, and we reached about 60% of its minimum yield stress with 44 foot-pounds of torque. So at 60% of the minimum yield stress, uh, we're still in the elastic region of this bolt, and everything is fine. If I were to remove the nut, the bolt would actually resume its original length, and it would not be permanently deformed. Okay, so I've put a brand new bolt in for test number two, and I'm about to apply a small amount of anti-seize just on the threads, not on the nut face, not on the washer face, because I wanna minimize the impact of the lubricant, and I wanna show you guys how much impact it has on the preload. So I'm just gonna dab on just a small amount of anti-seize right there. I'll put that away. Now I'm taking the nut, and I'm gonna run the nut over the bolt. Okay, we're ready to go. I'm gonna grab my torque wrench and we're gonna apply the same 44 foot-pounds to a lubricated fastener and we're gonna see what kind of bolt tension we get. Keep an eye on the gauge. There you go. So I haven't touched anything and we're just about 8,000, say 8,250 pounds of preload. So let's find out the percentage increase. Okay, using the same formula as earlier, we're gonna take the 8,250 pounds of preload, 
we're going to divide that by our tensile stress area, which is 0 0.0775 inches. We get 106,000 PSI. We are going to divide that by the 120,000 PSI. And we've reached almost 90% of its yield stress just by adding the lubricant. And so earlier it was about 60%. So that's a 30% increase in preload just by adding a little bit of anti-seize to the thread. And I did my best not to get any on the nut face, but hey, inadvertently, maybe when you add it to your wheel studs, you end up with a little bit on the actual lug nut uh, face itself, and you get an even higher bolt tension. So in this particular case, we still haven't exceeded the yield stress, but if you don't use a torque wrench, maybe the torque rating is different, you could yield this bolt. So what does all this mean for this bolt, or more importantly, your wheel studs? So bolts operate on the principle of maintaining tension on the joint. This is what holds the wheel to the actual hub. Now you have to think of a bolt kind of like a spring. When you overstretch a spring, what happens? Well, the spring never returns to its original size. It maintains that, that stretched length. And the same thing will happen to a bolt. Once you exceed the yield strength of this material, the bolt will no longer provide that tension or clamping force on your wheel and it will remain stretched. You've essentially ruined the bolt. Now, several things can happen after you've done this. So the first thing is that the bolts, which are your studs, can be subjected to other stresses other than tensile stresses, which are their design form. So this includes uh, shear stress and includes bending stresses. And the second thing that can happen is because you're no longer providing that tension force, the vibration in your wheels can lead to loosening of your lug nuts. And if all lug nuts loosen, I mean, your wheel's gonna fall off. And the last thing is that the loads on a wheel and the wheel studs are cyclic. So they happen over and over and over again. And subjecting the bolt to a bending stress over and over and over can lead to a fatigue failure in the bolt. So some of you may be wondering then, why don't we just reduce the torque rating on the wheel stud and go ahead and use anti-seize? And it's not a bad way of thinking. Uh, most bolts have a dry torque rating and a lubricated torque rating. So the lubricated torque rating takes into effect the loss of friction and it will essentially obviously be a reduced value and reduce the preload on the bolt. Now, the only problem with this for our wheel studs is that we didn't design the car. So we don't know how much clamping force was designed for that joint. So we don't know what the lubricated torque rating should be. So the safe thing to do is to just not use anti-seize and use the dry torque rating as recommended by the original manufacturer. Now, if you go ahead and try and guess a lubricated torque rating, you may under torque the bolt. And it's very interesting that the effects due to under torquing are actually very similar to the effects due to over torquing. So with an under torque nut, essentially what's gonna happen is the following. You haven't provided enough preload on this joint to keep it clamped shut. Every time an external force is applied, the joint has the potential to separate just a little bit. And I've exaggerated here with a really loose nut, but the same sort of thing is gonna happen. Every time this happens, now the bolt, which is your wheel stud, again, can be subjected to other loads. It can be subjected to shear loads, bending loads, and eventually it's gonna fail in fatigue which we don't want to happen. And you see this a lot on the side of the road, somebody's wheels falling off, maybe it's a broken stud, maybe it's again, uh, a nut, a lug nut that's come loose due to vibration. And it could potentially be because they had an under torqued lug nut. Okay guys, I hope that puts to rest some myths regarding adding anti-seize to your wheel studs. I would just do whatever the manufacturer recommends. There's a lot of smart people that calculate these things. Uh, engineers don't just pull numbers out of the air. These are calculated values and they're there for your safety. So I hope you learned something today. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and like it down below. Uh, ask any questions you want in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. And please subscribe to my channel. It helps motivate me to keep making more videos. Thanks guys.